Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to do a um, background in my traveler's notebook. This is just a notebook from Michael's. It fits in my traveler's notebook. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I have another video and I will link it below. I'm just showing you my Daniel Smith set and then I have a special gold paint that I will be using later. This is my Jane Davenport watercolors as well. I have a color scheme plan. And then I always get like an inspiration picture from Instagram, but otherwise, uh, I love how it turned out, but I didn't think it would turn out that way. So I'm going to do the watercolor in real time because one, watercolor fades when it dries, so you have to be really particular on how much paint you use. It looks super bold and vibrant when it's wet, and then when it dries, it doesn't look so bad, so I always keep it real time to really show people how crazy I get with my paintbrush, how much water I use, and um, if I keep layering. And I am using both hands here. I didn't notice that until I was um, editing that I'm using both hands. And I really like the left side better because the left side is my non dominant paint hand. Um, but I do draw and write with my left hand, so you'll have to keep that in mind as well. Uh, but definitely check that trick out if you really want to get like wild or go super loose with your paintbrush. I am using what I call a Mr. Handsome. Um, it is a size 12 round by Princeton and it is an elite. I did get it at Michael's. Use a coupon. We know the drill with that. Um, it's just a really nice brush. I just grabbed it because I use size 12 and I have two of them. So, um, But the colors that I used... I did use Daniel Smith because I am particularly in love with them and I got them for Mother's Day. Uh, the ones that I used were um, Organic Vermilion, uh, New Gamboge, which is that yellow color, and Quinacronome Fuchsia. And I think I did put a little bit of Quinacronome Coral in there as well. And uh, at the very, very end, I added some, uh, what is this one? This color is uh, titanium, no, cadmium yellow. Sheesh, I'm tired today. Uh, but yeah, I'm just kind of playing with my colors, really getting loose. Uh, I actually decided not to talk while I did it. I just really wanted to be in the moment and play with my colors and my paint. And... I liked it a lot better. I did film it in three separate parts, so sorry if it's not consistent framing, but uh, we learn as we go, for sure. But yeah, that was originally like the first layer, and I'm just going in and really adding some blending and vibrancy to the colors. The Cornacronome Fuchsia and that Vermilion Orange is so pretty together. The Vermilion Orange I really liked washed out as a super thin wash of color, but it's also vibrant enough that I do like it. I couldn't get the Cornacronome Coral in right away, so I picked Vermilion instead. Uh, I guess quarantine issues? I don't know. Um, but that's when I literally went crazy and bought all my Daniel Smith watercolors, which I will list the Etsy seller below where I purchased them from. Uh, she's super great, and I always I got them on a discount. Uh, because she had a sale, so I always look for a sale. But yeah, that running water was like the key ticket, and then I just splattered with some yellow here as well, and I re it really added something. This was pretty alone by itself, so... But yeah, it was very vibrant, and here I'm just going in with my second layer. I don't use a lot of acrylics in my traveler's notebook, but I really wanted to try to push myself and to do something different. This is just Michael's acrylic paint. I was in the 48 tube set trying to use them up. And this is, um, I believe, titanium. I already said that. Uh, no, unleached titanium. And I'm just watering this down heavily to just do like a super whitewash. Now, if you know mixed media and you know watercolors and acrylic, acrylic is plastic based, watercolors is water based. The watercolors are going to move. They're going to blend a little bit. They're going to blend in with that paint. They're going to cream up that beautiful white 
And surprisingly, I do like it. I'll have to try it with some pastel colors that I also have that I don't normally use. Um, but I did speed this part up as well because, I mean, I'm just kind of going over it. I originally wanted to go in circles, but it didn't really work out. And I didn't want to do that thick of a layer, so... Um, I started in like four squares and they kind of just blended all together, so. But I am adding water as I go. I did thin the paint out originally on that little palette, but then as I reach my arm up, that's where my water is. I do apologize for my arm, but... Um, I love the filming setup right now, and I don't really want to change my water. Where the water sits on my window frame, it's not going to spill on anything. So, But we'll work with that as the time goes by. But I do end up using all that paint, which is actually really, I'm really proud of myself. I have a hard time using up acrylic paint. Um, that palette shows my secrets to that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just really layer it on and I really let it dry before I go into my next step. Like I had to film the next step at night. So excuse the lighting. Okay, so now that the page is really dry, we're going to do the last step of doodling. I have my Sharpie gold marker, my Sharpie regular marker, and a Sharpie oil-based um, paint marker. This is um, one of my go-to staples. It's very black, very opaque, easy to work with, and it's really cheap and affordable, so that's also a win. And it's easier to find than like the Posco paint pens. So I'm just going to do this in real time to really show people the easiness of line work. Um, with this, I do the leaf a lot. I did it in like watercolor on the previous page as well. Find a shape or a item that you really like and that you can easily change the line work up just to give it a variation and use it throughout your work and your pieces. Um, I'll probably end up doing an abstract piece with this leaf because it is such a... Um, um, an iconic style to my work and I'm just doing pointed leaves I try to do pointed leaves but that they end up round at times um, and just kind of filling in the space going off the page going back on the page I do do larger leaves because I'll probably put the date in the leaves uh, when I go to write about my day or a memory or an event so I try to add little things like that to make it a little bit more uh, interactive on the page. It's just not a leaf randomly beside my writing. The writing is within the leaves. So, and I'm coloring this in with a gold Sharpie marker. Um, that marker isn't my favorite, but I'm just trying to use it up. So, it's still pretty and easy to work with. So, that's always a win as well. And then, usually on my other page, I'll like Grow, grow down like say if this would be a large abstract piece it would probably be a ton of vines and they started up went right and then down the page um, I think it's just a nice flow to the eye and it's fun to draw you're learning directions you're learning angles that sort of thing always keeping um keeping it realistic as well things don't grow in a straight line by any means if you ever look at weeds or vines, you'll know what I'm talking about. This side was harder though. I was drawing much smaller leaves and they all ended up like not being fully on the page, but it's fine. I mean, this isn't my best work, but it's not my worst work. And that's what it means to art journal and use a traveler's notebook. You do little doodles, little color theories. You're pretty much experimenting every day to see what you really love. And then you can write on top of it or you can change it. I 
love this page. It's beautiful. The colors are... I really pushed my creativity on this page, so... Yeah, I mean, that's what it totally... That's where I learned the most from, is just experimenting and not worrying about perfection. If I really stress, like, oh, I found this beautiful picture on Instagram, I want to do something just like it, and it doesn't end up being that way, I do get upset. But I shouldn't get upset. It Like, that wasn't meant to be for me. Uh, right now, I'm going in with the Uniball Signo Gel Pen, a very basic classic staple to buy jet pens. You can buy them in bulk or one at a time, and you can also buy the refill instead of buying the plastic over and over again, which I do appreciate. Um, I did zoom you in. The lighting is very um, golden hour, you would say, so bear with me, and I apologize if you can't see it because I am left-handed. Uh, I will post a... I will post pictures of this on Instagram at the in regular light and in evening light. So I definitely do want to create some kind of an abstract piece using these techniques. The You can't really use watercolor on a canvas though, so we'll have to see how that will uh, work. I think a canvas would look really nice with this. So we'll, we'll see. No rush on that. I have tons of art already on my walls. So I don't need to add to the collection just yet. So I'm just kind of trying to fill my way through this side because the side was harder to do. So it is a lot less. Um, and I also am kind of teaching myself to draw things from behind. That's also a really good thing to learn. Um, I forget what the technical word is. So, sh I mean, it is kind of shadowing, but we're not doing shadows. We're just drawing um, distance front or back or closer farther away so always good to kind of focus on a couple of skills that you want to invest in or get better at um, and also like it's always a struggle to have a really pretty color scheme every single page so you could also just study color every page and really find something that speaks to you and doodling is also fun because you can use it with bullet journaling you can use it in like notes pen paling and also turn it into real art so I'm just doodling and I do apologize if I'm out of frame I zoomed in as best as I could because these are pretty small details Okay, now that that portion's done, I'm kind of like looking at it, staring at it. What does it need? And when in doubt, add gold. <laughs> so uh, I am adding a couple of details. Maybe I missed a line completion, that sort of thing. But I always add gold. I probably add gold to almost every single page in my traveler's notebook. I love gold. And it's not real gold, but it makes you sparkle. So I'm using this from Schminka. It is the aqua bronze and rich pale gold. I think it's the middle shade technically. Um, and you just add this to water. But I ended up getting a half pan and dumping some in the half pan. And just re-add, re-wet it, reactivate it and use it from there. It's such a thick powder. It's really cool to work with. The first time I used it, it was a complete disaster. So I learned. I learned from buying one supply that was a very big investment. It's the first Schmincke product, product I've ever owned. But it will definitely come in handy for really cool things. So, And technically, you could add it on top of acrylic. You can add it on top of um, numerous things. So I don't think... I think it would turn into a really cool um, addition to a completed abstract piece from inspiration of this page. So many words to say today. <laughs> so, and I did speed this up because I'm just completing the fill-in. And I'm doing this in a very casual way using both hands again. Um, if you want to get more detailed, you can. Or you could add another variation of leaf shape in the gold alone. That would also be cool. Didn't think of that when I was creating this. So that's another inspiration that you could go off of. And obviously share your art with me on Instagram. My Instagram name is Lorelai Inc. Same as my YouTube and my GitHub. 
If you don't know what that is, you have to Google it. So, but yeah, this page was a lot of fun. It is very easy. Uh, minimal supplies, watercolor, um, a light colored acrylic paint, um, white would work as well. You could go with a pastel color. That is another experiment you could do. You could use a regular Sharpie marker. You could use a ballpoint pen. Uh, you could use a brush tip pen and then a ballpoint pen. And then I'm just showing you some pretty details up close. This is at night though, so it's very golden hour-esque. The yellows definitely pop. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye!